Hmm, get a tragic here. And what I'm gonna do here is something a little bit different. Basically, a mate of mine called Tough, he creates a mod called Mage Knight Highly Scripted. And he's a sort of online acquaintance of mine. Uh, we've been chatting on and off for a couple of years. He decided to make an Mage Knight mod and I had a pretty decent mod to begin with. So he's taken that mod and he's just taken it to a whole new level. I mean, he's made a mod that is so beyond anything I've ever made. And it's very, very scripted. Now he asked me to do a playthrough of Mage Knight using his mod. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe he wants to see an experienced Mage Knight player play with his mod raw because I've never used it before. So let's have a look. First thing you do, you open it up and it loads up this sort of awesome menu screen, which I really want to steal, basically. You can actually just click random. That's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play my favorite, which is Dungeon Lords. Oh, cool. Got little, got little text descriptions. I'm going to make turn blitz on just because I like having an extra unit card. It doesn't make a lot of difference in Dungeon Lords because... You can't actually take units into the dungeons. So all having Blitz on does when I play Dungeon Lords is that it allows me to clear the the sites better, you know, like uh, Rampaging Orcs or whatever. So we're going to include the Tesla mo Monsters because I love them. I assume that also includes the... Wait, there's a little help thing popped up. Ah, oh, yeah, it includes the reward piles as well. Okay, no, we won't use random tile or we won't use random cities. Start a high level, no, God. Rampage. Ah, awesome. So basically what rampage means is that any site, it's, it tells you right here, it's awesome. So that any site, once you defeat an orc, you've got a 50% chance to have that site come back to life. This is really good for leveling up fast, you know, because there's a lot of weak enemies in green. I don't know what more rampage is. What's more rampage? That's probably more rampage is probably the uh, double hex uh, provoke thing. All right. So this is so this is basically the same as rampage, but it has a hundred percent chance of deploying a second token the first time you kill it, and then it's fifty percent each time after that. Interesting. I've never played that before. Ambush Rampager. This must be the double hex. Yeah, so this is the one where you can be provoked within two hexes. Again, there's good and bad. This means that there's less movement freedom, but it also means you're able to clear the board quicker without spending all those movement points to get into range. I think I'm... Let's do Rampage just for fun. Start at night. No. Darkness is coming. No. Quest cards, Atlantean weather, going to not do them. Oh, yeah, add the custom Mage Knight. What's this? Rise of the Forge Masters. Oh, yeah, this is a fan-made official expansion. Yeah, yeah, so this is actually work in progress. I don't know whether this is uh, something I want to play. Oh, it looks like he split it into the modules. So New Beginning is just the tweaked action cards with his version of Balance. Not a big fan of player made balance mods. This is that's something that uh, it's usually different, not better. We could give them a go. Why don't we? What, what number two is actually uh, the mana shards and elixir of life is a more complex rule set, which I don't want to do because I don't want to have to learn new rules. So why don't we use what the new beginning that gives us rebalance and tweaked advanced action cards as well as a few new simple cards why not and we'll do random four players okay so we can actually adjust everything down here as well yeah so this is interesting so my big gripe with highly scripted mods i've got two gripes one is it is very hard to customize it because all the customization needs to be built directly into the mod by the modder. So if a new variant pops up or you make your own variant, it's very hard to implement them in highly scripted mods. But looks like since the last time I looked at this, which admittedly was like a year or something ago, maybe more, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, customization you can do just straight off the bat. 
My other gripe is that if anything goes, if you don't use the mod the way it's designed to be used, the whole thing can fall apart. All right, let's go. Hit start competitive, bam. Okay, so it's doing all its little thinking. Bonk. Why is uh, my screen not going right to the edge here? Okay, how about that? Right, so who have we got? We have Nice. Oh, here is a better way to do it. We have the custom hero. We've got Nauras. We've got Athegia or whatever her name is. Look, I can't pronounce names. I never can pronounce names. So, you know, just get used to that. She's actually my favorite mage knight. I call her the blood witch. I just soak up damage and then expel it. That's that's how I play her. It's a lot of fun. Oh, we've got Wolf Hawk, who's basically the, the wind dancer. Nice stuff. Okay. So it looks like it's asking us to claim the rewards first. What's this? This mod now runs its own turn system, which makes hot seat unnecessary. To switch to another mage, click the name and change the color. For multi-hand players, you should choose the black game master color. Okay. Game master. Cooperative players should also choose the same team. So this is interesting. It looks like I don't know how many, there's 21 spells, okay. So I think this has already included the, the competitive spells. So if you wanted to play four player cooperative, I guess you would have just added the dummy and then it would have done, okay, that's probably what it was. In the setup, there was probably an option somewhere I missed to add a dummy because the dummy's not added. And that means that would, they would probably not have the competitive spells and have the uh, cooperative spells. Yeah, okay, so that's an example of how these mods kind of confuse me. Like, see, if the competitive spells were just here, you could just put it in the deck or not if you wanted. Okay, let's have a look. Yig, what's he got? He's got whites and a heal. And what have we got here? Well, we want, basically want to get there, so he doesn't really need to do... You don't want to really want to get... Uh, any kind of combat. This is a great place to go because it's right next to a mage tower and you have, oh, and there's a gold as well. So that's probably the best one to go to. That is a five swamp though. That's one, two, three, four, nine. He currently has four. So I'm gonna take rethink flame. Rethink. When you take this tactic, discard up to three cards, including wounds from your hand, and draw that many cards, and then reshuffle your deck. What's this text here say? At the end of the objects found here will be cleaned up automatic, automagically. Nice. <laughs> I like that. Automagically. Face up cards will go to your discard pile. Face down cards, crystals, and rewards will be deleted. Mana dice will be returned to the source and rolled. Skills will be returned to their spot as if used. What the hell does that mean? Oh, right, skills, I get you. Yeah, the uh, the skills here. So what, you wanna drag them into the center when you use them, I guess. Face up monster tokens will be assumed to be defeated and put in their discard piles next to the frame board. Face down monster token, that's the important bit here. Face up and face down tokens. How do you do cards that bounce back into your hand? There is a number of them in this deck, in, in the decks. So now I have to do this bloke, he has four move. He's got some attacks. He's got a crystal. He does not have any influence. I think he's just going to go right here and <laughs> reveal all three of these. One, two, three, four, five, six he needs. So we've got four, five, six there. He needs a green or a blue. There is a blue, there is a green. I think I'm gonna take mana steel. Now, how does this work? Mirrored source, so that's mirrored from here. So I guess I mana steel from here and that'll take it off. Yeah, so and that's actually taking the die out of the mirrored source. Okay, that's pretty interesting. That's actually a really cool way to do it. Uh, so what I did on my mod is that when I roll the dice, they go really big and fat. 
to make them very visible. But I kind of like this idea of them being sort of a mirrored copy down here that's all ordered. It's actually a very cool idea. Uh, what else? Athea, she, what's she need? What's she got? She's the movement expert. Oh, she got five influence sitting right here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, she needs. She does have a great big movement. Four, five, six, yep. Yeah. So she needs a blue die. There's only one blue die. I think she's going to claim early bird. And, oh, hang on. I had the wrong person. Ugh. Now what? Now, <laughs> now, now I'm in, uh, now I'm in that terrible thing where I've sort of programmed the app to do the wrong thing. How annoying. Okay, so she's going to take great start. Except it's going to be like this. And then I have to just reshuffle that deck. Okay. And then you draw two. So we're set up and ready to go. That was a lot quicker than my mod. Oh, the turn order. It's programmed the turn order. Oh my God. Okay, so that, this is a good example why I don't like scripted mods. You make a mistake and how do you fix it? I'll just have to, I'll just have to do it this way. Okay, so what's this we got here? Camera control, map. Okay, player board. Oop. Card offers, that one works. Site info, that one works. Frame board, that one works. Rules, dummy board, there is no dummy board. So basically map isn't working and player board isn't working. So what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll make a camera save there and then I'll make a camera save here. Okay, so it is Athea's turn. What have we got here? Uh, Let's find a nice, ooh, look at he's added a lot more graphics. I wonder if he's made all the graphics or are these are actually objects sitting on top of it. Ooh, how about this? No, let's do a reddish color one since she's red. There's really only one option, is there? Boom, okay. So turn one, she has improvisation, which gives her a lot of things, including influence five, and she does have a lot of move. Uh, oh, I don't need to look at the, the source. The source is up here. <clears throat> okay, oh, let's get rid of that. Uh, what is that, two maybe? Yeah. So what's this button do? Oh, damn it. <laughs> I just put it there to get it out of the way. Jeez. <laughs> I don't know what that little, I don't know what the point of this little button is. And there's another great version of why scripted mods annoy me. I just put it there to get it out of the way because I could see what that token was and it flipped those guys up. Now we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So. Uh, let's take the green because that's a powerful dice. Four, five, six, and we'll chuck away this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four. Actually, you know what I am going to do? Instead, I'm going to do this. Let's, let's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's have a look at what's in the offer. What do we do here? Click uh, card offers, yeah. So we've got this guy can be recruited at a village, nice. This guy can be recruited at a village, 
This guy can be recruited at a village. He's got range attack two and a three block. Very, very cool. This one does have scout. It's got a siege attack. Very, very cool. Now, this is kind of one that you think it's a good one, but it's really not. Like, I do like scouts. I like the movement thing, but the siege attack is a, is a, is a red herring. Siege attack one isn't going to help you. And you don't really gain siege attack spells until you start to level up a little. So it's not really a lot of use. But being able to uh, look at the face down tokens three spaces away. And if you defeat that token, you get a plus one fame is awesome. And uh, you can also reveal new tiles at distances too. So this is actually a cool card. But I just can't get away from... I mean, range attack is so powerful, especially because we've added that re recharging wandering orc thing going on. So I want to get that. So I need six influence. Discard another card from your hand. So that would be... I can only get five this way. So basically, I'm going to have to do what I originally thought. Four, five, six, move. Just move there. And that's going to be the end of my turn. So what? I just hit... Do I draw, draw up to five? I just hit end turn, see what it does. Confirm your hand size, yep. And rewards claimed, bam. Nice. It is now this guy's turn. He's a dwarf. Do we have like a Moria looking thing? Uh, here we are. That looks dwarfish. Okay, so what was his plan? Rethink. He wanted to get. All right, we want to get to. Oh, let's uh, set this to the token. I'm also just going to turn off these toggles because I hate seeing the the state tooltip every time I mouse over it. So we want to go up to here. So we need what's that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. What have we got here? Nothing. We've got four. There's a blue. Four. Five, six. Seven. We can only get seven. Wait, did he? Did I? That's right. I didn't get to do this because it made me do the other guy's turn. So let's get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Get rid of. Oh wait. So yeah. So put in the discard pile first. Then we draw three. One, two, three. And then day two tactic. Click after cards have been discarded. Okay. Nice. And look at that. We got a whole heap of move. Perfect. So let's uh, take the blue die. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, gee. So let's take the white die. So the way the white die goes, it goes, take a mana die from the source and set it to any color except gold. So I guess I do this on the source. Now, even though I'm playing competitive, I like to play fair dice rules. And fair dice means that you can't use a mana draw to change gold and you, can't use, and you have to use blacks if possible. So I'm going to change this to blue. How do I do that? Blue hasn't changed it. Maybe I've got to drop it down again. There we are. And that gives me two blue crystals. 
What's he done to the crystals? They're, they're like glowing little, firing out little runes or something. Whoa! <laughs> That's pretty. Okay, whatever. Oop. And then we just go, boom. Eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bam. Ooh. And it automatically reveals. What have we got here? So we've got uh, six ice resistance. Ooh, five ice attack. Not cool. But we are done here. So that is in turn. We don't have any wounds to remove. Reclaim wards. Bam. Now it is, whose turn is it now? Athenia. Didn't I do her turn already? What is going on? Oh, it's because of this screw up I did around here. Oh no, that's, oh, I see. No, I've done everyone's turn. No, I haven't done this guy's turn. Athenia plunders a village. What the hell, is, what the hell is going on? I'm not plundering a village. Oh, right, right. Plundering villages can happen in other people's turns. I see what's going on. Right, so it's a bit hard to see. This should be a different color or maybe at the top of the thing. So it is Norwa's turn. Okay, what's he got? Uh, he's like an elf dude, isn't he? I did see a nice elf image somewhere that I quite liked. A little dark elves. Nah, it's too. I like this one. There we are. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's been a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning the mod as I go, so it's not quite the best example. Okay, so we've got a blue, so we're going to do four move for starters. That's pretty no brainer. We go one, two, three, four. We reveal these two sites. Oh, we have a very nasty witch. It's only three to attack. It is double siege. That means it does not have, oh wait. Okay, so that's, see the little, oh, I can't move my mouth. See the little castle in the top left there? That's actually the mod, not the token. So there is such a thing as, double, see, see the little physical resistance? To the left of that damage marker, the three armor, there can be a siege symbol. And if you have a sieged symbol and in a siege location, which is what, you know, a mage tower is, you're completely immune to any kind of siege damage. So basically the entire range attack phase is ignored. So that in this mod, he's placed a little reminder that this is a siege location. So that little left thing there is, uh, it's not the token, it's just saying this is a siege location, range attack has to be sieged. So that's a little confusing at first, but makes sense now I know it. But the point is this guy sucks because he's actually got a attack value coming from a dungeon tile. Right, and who's this guy? So you can see how this one also, this is a very, very easy one, awesome. So it's a, uh, just six defend and five attack. So remember, two attack siege locations, you need to move into them. So this guy is three to move in, this guy's, this guy's three to move in, and this guy is four to move in. So he has no movement here. So, this is attack four, attack three. I'm going to do another move two. And I'm just going to move in here. Bam. Let's have a look at this one. Ooh. Okay. So here's a great example. This is exactly what I was talking about. This is a double siege. See how it's got a siege icon as well as the mod icon. So this, you have to defend two attacks, three and five, not too hard and it is only four to kill. 
So that's actually a pretty cool one as well. Basically, this means that she fires twice. So you have to do two completely separate blocking steps. You can't just do a total of eight damage. You need to block five and then block three. Or in this case, just block five and you get one wound, I think. What do we start with? Two, yeah. Okay, whatever. Uh, we are going to attack next. So I think I'm going to discard this guy as well and go in turn. And finally, we have Wolf Hawk. Getting the hang of this now. Did I not take planning? Did no one take planning? God, I am an idiot. Future reference, planning is one of the best mod, uh, the best cards, particularly for early game, because the first couple of turns, you're always going to have two cards left over usually. So that was pretty terrible on my part. Okay, so probably the best place to go here. How do I do this again? It's, no, I forgot how to, <laughs> it's been so long, I've forgotten how to, not alt, not shift, no. There is a way you can do a little ping but I've forgotten how to do it. Tab, that's it, it, tab. There we are, I figured it out. So this one here is probably the the best one to go to because we can pick our thing. So we, we need, let me just get rid of that thing. So we need, uh, what is that? Three to get into forest, isn't it? Three, four, five movement. Okay, let's give her a background as well. Uh, I did like... Yeah, here we are. Okay, so we only need four movement. This should be very, very easy to do. Let's go... Range attack three. Or reduce the enemy's attack by two. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so move two, the next card providing move, including cards placed sideways, gives plus two. So that is two, three, four. But wait, that's one, two, how much do I need? Five. One, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three, four, five. That's six move actually. Which is three, six. Oh God, where's the thing? Here it is. No, nope, that's not it. Oh. <laughs> Here we are. And that leaves my crystallize free to power with blue. And I will take a white crystal. So basically, I think in early game, the two best crystals are white and green. White because it powers mana surge or whatever the hell it's called that allows you to get two from the source. And green because it powers this card here. Concentration. So I'm going to take a white crystal. I think, yes. Okay, so what? I just hit end turn now. Gain a crystal from the mine. So the, the mine is blue or green. So I'm going to take a green. Bam. Rewards claimed. Boom. And that, my friends, is the end of the first turn. Okay, so that went pretty smoothly, except for a little screw up with uh, taking the things at the beginning. Uh, I might play one more turn in this video, just because I want to do a bit of combat. Uh, where are we here? Firstly, she's in the village and we wanted to get one of these crossbowmen. So, well, it's been a while since I've played this game. I don't think you, I think you have to move first and then do your action, right? So I can't hire someone and then move. Is that correct? Uh, where's the rules? I really need to put a search on these things. 
Oh, well, that's no good. These things are all, there is a search, except all the overlays, all those overlays are kind of, oh, well, that's no good. Let me just look that up myself. Yes, uh, basically, I just had a look at it off camera, but basically, if you do your move, if you do your, the movement is first. So this is going to slow us down a bit, but still, let's do it. So we are going to go bam, discard another card from your hand to get five movement. We are going to discard... this one and we're going to pay with a red and we are going to grab oh wait five we need six that's all right how do i do this there we are we're just going to do this bam so that is five influence plus a discarded card to do improvisation. And then we do this one for one more influence. That's six, which means this thing has been hired. Let's lock it. And I think I'm done in turn. Don't want to chuck away that. And it is now, uh, what, claim rewards, there we are. So now it is the this guy's turn, the dwarf. Now the dwarf is up here. He should have a gold. Yep, he's got a gold thing already placed in his space. space. So we need three movement and then we need to... So we need five block, six attack, no ice. So if we have a look at, it's probably got, does it have a, oh yeah, so he's got my sheets that I made. Nice. Uh, so if the enemy is attacking with ice and we use regular block, we've got to block twice, basically. It's 0.5. So what that means is to stop five damage incoming, we need to block 10, which we can't do. There's no way we can do it at this stage. So we would take five damage. Not really an issue if we've got healing. Let's have a look at the rewards. Unit ready, not very useful in this game. Charm, very not very useful. So both of these aren't particularly useful because they are for units. And in Dungeon Lords, most of the combat is actually in dungeons and you can't take units into dungeons. This one thing here though is very good, but the point is there's no healing there. We have got a heal here, peaceful moment. You may get one heal for each two influence you spend or refresh a unit by paying two influence per level of the unit. That's a very, very nice card. You know, I can't really see any difference to the cards yet. Am I not doing it right? I, I shot, didn't I take the, uh, Modify it like sort of like a fan version of the cards, whatever. The point is I need three movement and then I need to attack. Uh, I want to keep the influence cards if I can. We need to attack the six. Now, just remember in Mage Knight, unlike, unlike Trek Knight, so in Mage Knight, which is, I hate, this is, this is a little tip for myself, is when I do, you know, tables like this, I actually right click it and I turn off the uh, tool tip. And that way, when you're moving your mouse over it, it's not like popping this text up just exactly where you want to read. Whatever, the point is, unlike Trek Knight, they've, it's sort of reversed. So when you are being attacked, you have to block with the correct resistance to get one to one. But when you're attacking, it ignores resistance unless your attack is of that type. For example, you can see if I use a regular attack and he has ice resistance, it's still one to one. It's only physical resistance on a regular attack that is halved. 
So what that means is it's six to kill this guy. Is the point. Uh, who am I? Who am I playing here? This guy. You can increase this attack by one for every wound card you receive during this battle. Okay, we can definitely kill him with this card. You can increase this attack by one if you receive a wound card in this battle. So that will kill him with a red. Okay, so that will kill him. Because we have two, which means we take three wounds. Okay, so the way the wounds work out is you just divide it and round it up, right? So two goes into five, two and a half times, round it up, three, three wounds. Which means this will attack for four, five, six, seven, which is enough to kill him. So all I need to do is move in, and I need three to move in. So that's one, two. Oh dear. Kind of annoying that I've got no other moves. I want to keep these influences, but I, I just can't bring myself to chuck away a concentration. Technically, this is what I want to do. So if I go four, five, six, if you are in this location, you need to oh wait, so if you're in if you're in the uh here we are, over here, here we are. So when you Conquer a mage tower, you gain a card, and then it's seven influence to get a card. Now we want to do that because we are also going to take peaceful moments because we'll level up, which means we need to spend, oh wait, this comes with influence itself, six influence. So we don't need to worry about any of this. Yeah, so when we spend influence, we actually gain heals. So we're gonna have three wounds, so we need to spend seven. That's going to heal us all our wounds. Perfect. So that's actually a good turn. So let's just do that. So that is three movement. Gets us in here. Oh, God. Stupid button. What, what is that button even for? Oh, what's happened? Oh, that's cute. So you just drop it on it, and it automatically takes the token. What, what happens when I, oh, if I click that, it's going to try and provoke him. You know what? I don't think you can provoke through uh, walls there, mate. That is an error. Maybe that's one of the rules with the rampage rule that we chose. Whatever. Anyway, so looks like I don't need that. Four, five, six. Whatever. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to use the gold. So we've moved in three and now we are taking the wounds. So how do I do wounds? Just click one, two, three. And now I need to hit back the six. I get four, five, six, seven, which kills this guy. And that's that, right? Oh, look at this. So end turn, uh, that means I haven't defeated him, but if I flick it over, end turn and level up. So let's do it. End turn and level up, bam. Has that done all that? I have gone down. We were supposed to start at negative one, weren't we? Because we did that special rampage mode. Whatever. So I have leveled up, means I get a skill and I get a card. But first, because I completed the Mage Tower, I get a, a Mage card. So we're going to take the Winds one, bam. And then we are going to take Peaceful Moments, bam. And what have we got here? Okay, so firstly, we have block two or attack two and of any elements if we spend mana. Blue mana gives us ice block and red mana gives us fire block, fire attack. That's pretty cool. What have we got here? Once around, you can use one non-interactive skill belonging to another player, even if it is exhausted. That skill can be used by the owner on their next turn. Bonds of loyalty can't be targeted. This is a fantastic skill. It looks like it's also a competitive skill. So if I press one, it'll show you the cooperative skill. Oop, and it deleted all these things. Damn it. Yeah, whatever. See, I, I sometimes play uh, competitive and cooperative skills at the same time. And that way you can have alliances in competitive games. This had Ranger to be incredibly powerful. You know what? Just for fun, I'm going to take Master of 
Q-Birth the Mad or whatever. Boom. Okay. It's my skill. So I've leveled up. Are there any other rewards I get from this site? No. So I've gained my site rewards. One, two, three, four, five. I only draw up to five. I need one more card. So I'm going to discard one card as well. You can discard as many cards that aren't wounds at the end of your turn as you like. So this is going to let me draw one card, which, if I've done it correctly, should be the healing card I just got. And rewards claimed. And that's that. Oakley dokley. Now, did that put down a marker, or do I have to click this button? Yes, it did put down a marker. It is now Norwell's turn or whatever. Where is he? Right. Six to attack and God knows what to defend. Plus we need four to get in there. We can explore this tile. So what has he got? Heal one, draw a card, gain a green mana token. Heal two, draw two cards. So he can take damage this turn. He's got no movement though. Oh, right, yes he does, he's got this. Discard another card from your hand to get three move. Pack four. So this would be, I need the heal. What do I need? Six. I have to move in here. This is the only one that has a movement I can get into because that is three movement. These ones are four movement. So let's so I can do five movement with a discard and a red die. So let's just do a test. So that would be five movement. If I get five movement, I still need, I need six or four to kill. That would be four wounds. That could be anything. This is a hand icon, which means it can be done at the end of the turn. I believe if that should be written here somewhere. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so he doesn't have the hand icons written anywhere. So this should probably be in the mod. You may play any number of special effects at any point during turn. This applies for healing effects except they cannot be played in combat. So what that means is I can actually do, I can actually do this after combat. So I need a green die for that, which I do not have, but there is a gold. So I need that for, yeah. So this is kind of impossible to do. What I need to do is actually go, if I did that, I can get two greens that'll power. Oh God, this is so annoying, this thing here, because I've got to discard a card. Yeah, so basically I have to go four, five, six, and that. This is basically what I have to do. So that would get me into here. It's three to get into there. So we go three. Oop, and it automatically takes our location. Cool. So that is discard another card from your hand to move three. And this is the card I'm discarding. And then I need to attack, I need to block for six, which I can't. So that means I take three wounds, one, two, three. And then I use concentration with the gold to gold mana to power it. And that gives me four attack plus two, which is six, which is enough to kill this guy. So that guy is also destroyed. End turn, you blonk, you blonk, blonk, blonk. Okay, so he gets a new skill. What have we got here? Intimidate. Got another reputation hack. We are already at zero, that's fine. Counter attack. Attack two. This attack is increased by two for each enemy you have successfully blocked this turn. Counter attack is a fantastic card, but really not useful until way in the late game. Training. Throw away an action card from your hand and take a card of a different color. Oh, wait, that's a great one. I'm just going to claim that. Kabam. Pure magic, whoa, good cards. Right, now, unfortunately, I can't really do this. I can do this now and heal one card, or I can heal two cards next turn. I think I'd rather heal the two cards. Is this, uh, is this, yeah. Okay, so that's his turn. I haven't got the new skill. 
Okay, so this is a cool one. Basically, once a turn, influence three during the day and influence two at night. And this one, once a turn, get move one for each ready and unwounded unit you control to a maximum of three move. This is actually a really good card for Dungeon Lords because as I've said a bunch of times, if I go to site info, the dungeons, you're not allowed to use units, which means they don't really see a lot of combat, spend a lot of time ready. You usually get them in Dungeon Lords to gain crystals or heal, stuff like that. I think I'm gonna take this one. And, oh wait, I just took a castle. So I should have a keep tracking tokens. I'm just gonna put these down here so I remember that I have one castle under my power. So I draw up to six cards, it's already remembered that. Rewards claimed, bam. Beautiful. I got a move. I got training to get another card, and I got rejuvenate. That's really awesome. Oakley Dokley. Uh, next is Wolfhawk. Wolfhawk needs. Uh, that's a four to get into the wasteland. So that's one, two, four, five, six. But no movement at all here. Bam, move four. Four, five, six. One, two, five, six. Bam. And that's the end of her turn. Nice and simple. Uh, in turn, bam. Whoa! Uh, it goes back in the source. Okay, so that's two turns. A lot of sites around here. You know, if Norway's can get this one next, he'll have a huge hand after he doesn't explore. I, I don't, I can't remember if you can provoke over, I didn't think you, I don't think you could. No, I think what you can, I think you can provoke over the wall and they gain siege, but they will not attack you if like, if I move to here, they won't attack. I'll check that rule. It has been a while since I played Mage Knight, like a good six months. Well, that's that. I will see you guys next time.